In this second part of two covering the Airbus A380, I explore its one-dimensional nature, really taking a look at how a similar style of plane, the Boeing 7478, thanks to its freighter version, can adapt better in a market where these types of planes are very generally already out of favour. And over 70% of viewers are not subscribed to Globetrotting, so if you'd like to help support the channel grow, feel free to click the button, it would certainly mean a lot. The Airbus A380 entered a market where the need for quad-engined high-capacity double-decker planes had significantly diminished. This was an answer that had taken multiple decades to come up with, as Airbus wanted to better compete with Boeing's 747, but entered when trends were drastically changing. Had it been earlier, well, we'll always be left to ponder the what-ifs, but simply that didn't happen. We were left with a plane that entered service at what many would say is the wrong time, among experiencing many other difficulties. However, because of its sheer size, the aircraft was really only capable of specific missions to begin with, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it could put it at a disadvantage. When Airbus released the plane, the intended model the A380 would thrive on was that of the hub and spoke, where airlines would place the type on a high-profile route, say London to the Middle East, and fill it up relatively easily. This ultimately meant it could work with particular customers, which was seen with the overall commitments and just how many there actually were. Emirates operated a hub and spoke alongside other critical Middle Eastern carriers, really focusing on services from one airport to another high profile port globally. However, this, as aforementioned, doesn't always work for others. Does this make the A380 a bad aircraft? Not necessarily. The aircraft is still hugely important to the many companies that do fly it, but it already makes it more one dimensional than, say, a next generation twin-engined aircraft that was coming through at the same point. As I'll continue exploring without any alternatives away from these passenger operations, it means the A380 really had to go big or go home, and while that was successful with Emirates, if Emirates had never invested in the program, I think there would have been very many questions over its actual success and whether those respective customers that were reacting to Emirates would have even ordered it. So what else was there for a plane if it didn't go big? Well, not a whole lot. Where the 747 and A380 failed to reach the heights expected of them in an order sense, even worse at the 7478 when looking at its passenger variant, at least with Boeing, they had the capability to sell a freighter version, alongside the element of it not being a clean sheet design like the A380 with bloated production costs. But in another world, there could have been another use for the A380 as well. Yes, that's the A380F. It's the variant that is often talked about, but likely ignored. While we never saw it fly eventually, it did gather momentum and there were fully plans for it to launch, even commitments being in place. The A380F would have looked to build upon the fantastic space that the passenger variant would have offered. Ultimately, why this variant never eventuated is a long story and will be thoroughly explored in the future, but very generally, with concerns about getting the A380-800 up and running and the delays there, it meant priority needed to be placed on the passenger variant. There was talk at a point of a combi variant, but essentially nothing really ever progressed, which meant we were stuck with just the A380-800, which served that one purpose. Another downside to the world's largest passenger plane, and whether Airbus predicted a situation like this is a question for another day, but that's the second-hand market. Most aircraft enjoy a long, fruitful life, maybe with one airline and then spend their twilight years with more niche-based carriers, kind of doing the rounds before their retirement. Or it'll be a type of aircraft that will fly with 10 airlines across a 20-year or 30-year lifespan. Whereas for the A380, it doesn't have a second-hand market, period, excluding the one unit that flew with high fly and eventually was pulled for a host of reasons, but primarily because it simply didn't work. No other airline has taken on the Airbus A380 second-hand or expressed a very firm interest in doing so once airlines start retiring their units. If an A380 is retired by its primary carrier, it is very likely to either A, be scrapped or just very simply stored until it eventually does get scrapped for parts. It doesn't say get picked up again. 
Global Airlines is a startup, if you could call it that. It promises to fly A380s from London Gatwick right around the world. But I do think there's more chance of an A380neo than that airline actually getting airborne. So I wouldn't want to include them properly in the secondhand market unless by some miracle they do actually get in the air. While there's no secondhand market now for the A380, will there be one one day? Well, it's a valid question, especially considering most airlines return the type to service and are not looking to retire them just yet, but the likelihood remains very low, and the fate of the A380 seemed almost all but sealed when it first came to life. And once it ends its life with a specific airline, it'll head to the scrapyard and remain a one-carrier operator. The 7478's second-hand market remains very much unclear. But not for the first time, the mention of the freighter comes as a saving grace when exploring its long-term place in the industry. Older 747Fs, you can see, are acquired cheap from small freight operators after they finish their life with, say, a significant Atlas Air-type company. The Dash 8 Fs, though, are still far too young and only recently saw deliveries formally conclude. So in the next 10 to 20 years, it'll intrigue me to know the landscape of where these units lie and whether there is a second-hand market at that point when we see these next-generation freighters really thriving. As aircraft age, we always see that possibility of them being converted from passenger to freighter aircraft. It's seen widely already with the 767 program and the A321 on a smaller scale. And now we're getting our first glimpse of a 777 passenger to freighter. However, again, the second-hand market for a jet like the A380, and even for the potential P2F, doesn't exist. And while there were commitments for the A380F, which indicates at least to us that there was interest, these customers that ordered the type in the early 2000s, remember, have very much moved on, and will now be looking towards next-generation freighters from Airbus and Boeing, which are not quad-engine planes, rather twin-engined aircraft that are based on the A350 and 777X respectively. So for the A380, it was an aircraft that's fate many would argue was decided at birth. However, its one-dimensional nature certainly has played a part in its legacy. While being more than present and being a flagship for many airlines, maybe overall its legacy won't be as significant as enthusiasts would have hoped, remaining for the most part a one airline operator. But does that make it in your eyes a disappointment, or was it successful at doing what it was intended to do to a certain degree? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you'd like me to explore more aircraft here on the channel, whether it be the downsides or their many successes, you can let me know too. Thank you very much for your support and make sure to subscribe if you are new for more analysis just like this. Take care and be safe and I'll see you next time.